So, a fresh new week has arrived, and here on this channel, that means one thing and one thing only. Every weekend, I post an episode of this series we do called Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, the regular season continued to inch toward its end, big time matchups have been unraveling to some surprising degrees, especially in the Western Conference, and the awards races are as tight as ever, so of course we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. As the 2023 NBA season approaches its end, on prize picks, it's still the best and easiest way to play daily fantasy to stay engaged on all of the excitement. All you have to do is pick between two and six players and the over or under on their projections, and you can win up to 20 times your original entry. Choose between points, rebounds, assists, three-pointers made, fantasy points, and more, plus you can even make mixed sports entries, so if you happen to also be a fan of football, baseball, soccer, or anything else, Prize Picks has you covered. When you play at Prize Picks, you're also not competing against anyone else, it's simply you versus the projections available. For today's slate of games, I'm looking at playing Mikhail Bridges to score the under on his points, Joel Embiid to score the over on his points, and Kyrie Irving to hit the over on his points as well. By going down to the link in the description of this video and using promo code REFERENCE when you sign up, up. You also get a deposit match bonus of up to $100. Once again, thank you to Prize Picks for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from OJ, and he says that the Suns made a mistake trading away Mikhail Bridges for Kevin Durant. When the Suns traded for Kevin Durant, it changed everything about the landscape of the league, and honestly, with the direction that the Suns were headed at the time of the deal, it felt like an absolute must to save their season. Devin Booker and Chris Paul had both missed extended periods of time due to injury, the team was losing way more frequently than they had in previous years where they were top seeded in the West, and it was seriously looking like their window for contention was closing. Kevin Durant is one of the best players the league has to offer, so when his fallout with Brooklyn went down, they did what needed to be done to acquire him, even if it felt like an overpay at the time. But now that the regular season is about to end, I think the level at which they overpaid is starting to settle in, which is why takes like this one are spawning. The full package that the Suns gave up included both of their best wing players in Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson, plus four first round picks and a first round pick swap. Meanwhile, in Brooklyn, Mikhail Bridges has been looking like the second coming of Kawhi Leonard. Since he's gotten to Brooklyn, Mikhail is averaging about 28 points, shooting the ball 50% from the field and 43% from three, so not only has he and his production been increasing in a bigger role, but he's also somehow become even more efficient as a result of it. Obviously, we need to see this continue in a larger sample size before we start calling Mikhail Bridges the next big superstar in the making, but his emergence does lead us to ask some questions about what was going on in Phoenix. I'm not going to say that Phoenix was holding him back necessarily, but it is pretty wild seeing him immediately take off to this degree once he gets traded away, and Kevin Durant is only going to be able to play around 10 total games with the Suns before the playoffs roll around, so they don't have much time at all to develop the chemistry that it might take to go all the way. Durant is as talented as it gets, and he can heat up scoring the ball as well as anybody, but talent alone doesn't necessarily win championships. With Durant's injury history, it's hard to overlook the amount of risks that have come as a result of this trade, and if McHale continues down this path, it very well could prove to be a regret. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Colin, and he goes into depth about why he believes that at this point in his career, along with the current situation that the Trailblazers find themselves in, Damian Lillard is actually more of a negative than a positive for them. Obviously, at first glance, everyone's natural instinct is to call a take like this crazy because Lillard is, without question, one of the best point guards in the league, and his loyalty to the franchise that drafted him should be applauded rather than 
been demonized. However, there is some nuance that needs to be applied to this situation, and at a certain point, it does become better to apply the phrase, if you love them, let them go. The Trailblazers are officially out of the playoff hunt and have shut Lillard down for the remainder of the season because they don't have anything to play for. Lillard continues to insist that he wants to build a winner in Portland and doesn't plan on going anywhere else, but the fact of the matter is that, as it currently stands, the Blazers really don't have any realistic road to contention in the near future, and with Lillard turning 33 years old this summer, time is ticking for them to be able to do so while he's still playing his best. They're not necessarily a top free agent destination, failing to attract any big name free agents in the Lillard era, and while they have a few assets that they could trade for a big name, I'm not quite convinced that a package of Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp plus some draft capital is beating out what other teams on the market could have to offer. Almost every basketball fan at this point acknowledges that it's probably time for the Blazers to rebuild, but Lillard is almost holding them hostage, preventing them from doing so, which in turn has led them down this path where the end result is mediocrity at best. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Nick, and he says that Zion Williamson's struggles with injuries are always going to hold him back, so the Pelicans would be wise to trade him while his value is still high, before it's too late. Zion Williamson's path through the NBA to this point is honestly just disappointing. When he's healthy and on the court playing, he's genuinely an incredibly entertaining talent that dominates inside like few others today. His combination of strength and agility makes him a walking mismatch for defenders, and this year, he and the Pelicans were looking like a real force to be reckoned with sitting atop the Western Conference standings early on in the season, but then, as has been a recurring theme in Zion's career, Year, he suffered an injury that has forced him to miss the last three months, and the Pelicans' season has been downhill since then. This is such a tough spot to be in because they just signed him to a long-term max contract extension, but in four years, he's only been able to play a total of 114 games. The Pelicans are so close to being a real contender, and they arguably could be right now if Zion was healthy, but if he barely ever is, then things become a lot more difficult and while you never want to predict future injuries and base your reasoning for moves on that hypothetical, I don't think it's crazy for the Pelicans to at least consider other options. Personally, I don't think they should be in any rush to look to move on from Zion Williamson because he is genuinely so dominant when healthy, and you can't just replace that kind of talent. He's under contract until 2028, so you have time to figure this out, but I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't getting a little bit concerned. 